Good morning, this is Shelby Law with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, October 1st, 2016. The main fire potential impact will come tomorrow on Sunday afternoon as some very strong winds move into the western and central portions of the Great Basin ahead of a very strong cold front moving into the area. While fuels are not necessarily critical in these areas, the winds will gust from 40 to possibly 60 miles an hour, and so we definitely want to highlight those winds. These images show the precipitation and lightning activity for the past 24 hours. The main thing to point out here is a band of showers that moves through central Idaho in the overnight hours. With yesterday's winds over western portions of the Great Basin, we did see a few larger fires pop up, notably over southwest Idaho and northwest Nevada. Overall fire danger values continue to be below the 50th percentile for much of the region, with some continued dryness over western Idaho and western Nevada. This morning's water vapor imagery shows that band of showers that moved through Idaho overnight will be continuing to move eastward through the Great Basin. This little band could bring some showers in the late evening to overnight hours to northern Utah. The main feature to look at, however, is the strong area of low pressure off the Pacific Northwest coast. This low will be moving inland over the next few days and track through the Great Basin for Sunday and into the first part of next week, bringing a significant change to the weather. For today, generally sunny skies and low relative humidities will continue across the western portion of the Great Basin, with that band of showers possibly moving through northern Utah late, later this evening. Minimum relative humidities will be in the low teens across the west. On Sunday, the area of low pressure moves inland over northern California and southern Oregon. This will bring very strong winds to central portions of the Great Basin. Sunday could still be a generally dry and sunny day for much of Nevada and western and southern Utah, but some showers will move into central and eastern Idaho and western Wyoming ahead of the main low pressure. The main impact for Sunday will be those very gusty winds in eastern Nevada and western Utah, with gusts from 45 to 60 miles an hour possible. On Monday, the main area of low pressure swings through the Great Basin, and this will drop temperatures significantly across much of the area and bring widespread showers as well. This map shows the coverage for those rain and snow showers. This activity will be centered over Idaho, western Wyoming, northern and central Utah, and northeast Nevada. Some areas will remain dry, particularly the southern Great Basin and far western Nevada. Winds will continue to be gusty ahead of the cold front across southern and southeast Utah. Three-day precipitation accumulations are shown here. The precipitation continues to be focused over mainly the northern Utah mountains, central and eastern Idaho, and western Wyoming. Much of Nevada will remain dry for the first three days. A broad area of low pressure remains the dominant weather feature and will continue to see cool temperatures and showers mainly across the northern half to two-thirds of the Great Basin on Tuesday. Showers will continue especially across the north on Wednesday as the trough slowly moves off to the east. By Thursday some dryness will return to the Great Basin although cool northerly flow will keep temperatures on the cooler side. By Friday, high pressure will begin to build into the Great Basin, allowing a return of sunny skies and warming temperatures region-wide. The seven-day totals continue to show precipitation coming to Idaho and northern Utah, while Nevada remains on the drier side. The extended outlook for the second week of October calls for normal to slightly above normal temperatures for the Great Basin and an above normal chance for some precipitation to Idaho and northern Nevada. This concludes today's fire potential briefing and will be the last fire potential briefing of the 2016 fire season. Starting next week we'll begin our smoke and prescribed fire briefings.